So here's here's a very long shot goal, right? So you're gonna graduate. Imagine if we just blew up out of nowhere. I'm just like, hey, I found you a full time job. It's the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> right? But yes, that will be a long shot for for sure. But either way, um, it's still a dream, and we're thriving for that. So keep you up your support because it definitely goes a long way, and it helps us continue to do these things. Anyway, let's get into a little warm up now, shall we? So this is an an extension of what we were already talking about in the last episode, okay? And this was when we were talking about the 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 curse of the Saiyans theory, okay? Remember how I mentioned that, well, this was originally came from Joey, and then we expanded upon it. So, shouts to Housetop, right? So, the theory is that the tales of Saiyans have been known to be a weakness, and obviously, with everything that's that's being introduced or revealed out of Daima, we know that Namekians came from the demon realm. There's a potential of the Saiyans also coming from the demon realm because when you look at when they turn into great apes, they also have pointy ears. And obviously, they have already mentioned that just because um, a creature or a being has pointy ears doesn't necessarily mean that they are from the demon realm. But you, they also send the same breath that more than likely they probably are, right? So... Just to put that out there as a little refresher. Um, so, house top, and then well, again, we elaborated. We said that what if that the, the reason why the Saiyans' tails are a weak point is because there was a curse put onto them that came from the demon realm, right? And that's why it's like their biggest weakness, and that's why ultimately they ended up just getting rid of the tails, right? So, I say all that to preface. Because one of my friends, one of my close friends, right? My, my boy Chris. Not your Chris, my Chris, okay? So, my dude Chris, shout out to Chris, okay? He admitted that he was like, okay, I'm on the podcast. I'm listening, right? I'm watching, right? So, shout outs, okay? Friends should be do- listening to the fucking podcast anyway, right? So, he said he was listening. And... He was like, I think that theory that you guys have with the Sands being cursed and all that, with the, you know, great apes and all that, I think you guys are onto something. And then he plugged something that I was not expecting, but I should have knowing how he is and what he really likes. And this is something that I'm not going to lie. I was very, like, taken back in a way because I'm just like, I can't believe I'm about to bring this up on the podcast and reference this. Because of the nature of it, and I'm sure you guys will understand once I say this, he brought up something that happened in Dragon Ball Heroes. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Right. So we already know how to go into this mentally. Because, like, okay, well, if it's Dragon Ball Heroes, then how much validity does it even have? Because it's not fucking real. You know, it's like, it's not canon, it's not in the main continuity, right? And those things are true. We all know this. Dragon Ball Heroes is an anime that was used to essentially promote its own game. Simple as that. And naturally, it has a fan base. It has an audience. So what that obviously entails is people are going to watch what happens and then they're going to think how they want to think and perceive information, take in information how they want to. But at the end of the day... It doesn't matter because it's not in the main continuity, right? And that's why we stopped covering it. We stopped reacting to it. And that's why I ultimately just stopped paying attention to anything that Dragon Ball Heroes or Super Dragon Ball Heroes was even doing. He gave up on it way sooner than I did. I will say that. <laughs> um, he, a matter, I, I actually remember you, you, you once referred to Dragon Ball Heroes as Mario Party. No? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, why are you calling this Mario Party? Be like, because it doesn't matter. I'm like, okay. I don't even remember that. Yeah. It was a long time ago. All right. So, so okay. So, so what exactly happened out of Dragon Ball Heroes that ties into all of this, right? So, he showed me a specific scene that happened between a, I guess you could call an altercation, some sort of fight. They were in the middle of it. I don't know if you guys like Jay. Did you watch any Dragon Ball Heroes at all? Like, are you familiar with some of the characters? I saw I saw the first episode, and then I've seen clips over the years. Okay, so like 
I might visually know them, I, like names. I'm not really sure. But. Okay. So, do you guys remember the character Cumber? No. Okay. All no, right. That's not. fine. So, Cumber is a character that was like this shows Broly before Broly, of course, eventually gets involved yeah. at some point, right? Cumber, he has a very Broly like. He has, he has a lot of Broly characteristics to him. He's big, you know, he's brolic, and he's rage, and he's completely full of rage. But then he has, like, his hairstyle is very Raditz-esque to give you guys, like, a, a picture or to paint a picture of, like, exactly, like, what he looks like, right? So in this fight, Cumber is like a great ape, okay? And so then there's another character. His name is Few, F-U, right? He's a purple-looking guy. Could be from Demon Run for all we know. Got pointy ears, right? He's got white hair, wears glasses, and he looks like he could be a decent fighter. I'm pretty sure he's in Xenoverse. I'm pretty sure at some point he may end up getting thrown into Sparking Zero as well. But here is the kicker. Few whipped out like some sort of aura sword, okay? And he points it up to the sky specifically where this fake moon was that, I guess, caused uh, Cumber's transformation to even happen. And he absorbed, which I, I guess I would assume, the blood waves out of that moon. Therefore, mm. completely, like, nullifying Cumber. And then, when, and then, and to top it all off, he jumped at Cumber and he struck him with that sword. So, I'm wondering, was this ability that he had magic-based into that, if that's a curse, if we're to believe that the, the, the Great Ape Transformation is curse-related, like, did that have some sort of ability to reverse engineer it and then, you know, essentially, like, take that away so that they all don't die from him being, like, a fucking Ozaru and something like that? So I, I bring that to the table because I wanted to know what you guys thought of that. I don't have much, honestly. <laughs> okay, that's when fair. It comes to, yeah, no, I don't think so. You don't think it, does, it doesn't mean anything, really? Mm -mm. Okay. JD, you got so, anything? So, so are we talking about like just the idea that like the Blux waves are something that could be manipulated? Well, it's just like the just the concept that like. Well, like assuming the blux waves are the things that like is is whatever like mystical energy that allows the sand to transform right. into an Oza like Ozaru. Like, is it something that can't they can manipulate? Because I guess technically Bulma and GT she made a machine that could manipulate it in that kind of way. So is go. that something the demon realm like kind of infused into the like if 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 the tales were a curse? Then they could use the Blux waves as like a a trigger to mm -hmm. trigger that curse or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um. It's definitely like a reach. It's a crazy reach. I could see why it's interesting. Though. Right. Right. Um. The 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 main reason it like because it's from Heroes, it's like I automatically just want to say whatever. It's in Heroes. It exactly. Matter. Yeah. But um, I do think that. I, like if if they did try to say that there was some kind of again some kind of like mystical explanation for the great of transformation or um that ties into the demon realm in some kind of way that that the kai's are able to manipulate i wouldn't necessarily put it past it like i think that there there's there there could be some kind of precedence that's created, you know, because sometimes like, uh, you know, like I, I, f I forget exactly where, but it it's not uncommon for fan fiction to some kind of work its way into canon at mm. times. Yeah. And Dragon Ball Heroes is just like generally f like, you know, huge fan fiction. But, you know, we did get Super Saiyan 3, Vegeta and Broly in play <laughs> as playable in the game, not in the show, but we got them in the games, which is still you know yeah i remember something. them being in like raging blast raging blast one and two and, yeah it's not know, this is not new the, which is which is not again yeah um 
it, but but it's, it's still one of those things where they they like to teeter around with it because of how expansive the Dragon Ball fandom is nowadays. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I th- I think it's like I I like where I like where the thought is going, but I wouldn't bet any money on it yet. Fair. But um, I'm definitely curious because again, like this this whole, you know, I like I'm looking forward to seeing how the adventure begins as they're actually in the demon realm and Daima. Daima right, because right. Like, we, like I think the episode, the, the way the episode left off, they were just about to go. Like they hadn't even fully left yet. Yeah. They just left. They were on the way. So, yeah. So like, I want to see like the first episode or two, like as they're going through the demon realm, like what, what kind of tone they're building up mm-hmm. and, you know, um, just, just to kind of get some clarification, but it'll be, it'll be interesting. Yeah. You know? Bet. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, all right, so 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 I had to I had to start I had to start us off with that one just to see like where you guys what you guys thought thoughts on that was, um, but uh, yeah, I honestly like hearing your thoughts on it. I I originally I wasn't even gonna put too much stock into it just off the principle that it is Super Dragon Ball Heroes, but mm-hmm. like the fact I mean one can argue. That if Toriyama is obviously borrowing, or not even just borrowing, but he's like literally taking what Toei tried to do with GT, and he's writing his own version of how he would have done something similar to GT, not necessarily like, oh, I'm just copy and pasting things. Who's to say that he couldn't make references to Dragon Ball Heroes, which I'm sure will make a lot of people happy. But I'm not going to put all my eggs in that basket. But hey, the theme song was fire. Super yeah. Dragon Ball <laughs> Heroes. Oh, okay. Let's I move mean, on. Every now and then, it's still, it's still cool to see like just some like, whoa, what the what the heck, Super Saiyan Four Gohan? Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that. Like, I mean, it's, it's it's fun, as stupid as it is. But it's just like I, I I'll look at the picture, but I'm not watching that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. The moment y'all have been waiting for. We got a lot of responses to go through, so I'm going to try to read through as many as them as humanly possible. So, on that note, it is now that time for your question of the day. Okay. And, per usual, I asked, would you want to see a Broly arc upon Dragon Ball Super's anime return. Oh, that's that good... 